So when we talk about visual communications, I think it's uh, it's it's a lot more than just a pretty picture uh, in blog posts or those ever popular infographics. I think that um, um, when we talk about visual communications, um, it really is a powerful medium that um, the human visual system really uses to communicate information in, in a way that's easy to consume, understand, and, and recall later. As a matter of fact, I think that visual content uh, really makes your message stick. It's um, giving you the opportunity to really creatively connect with your consumers through great design, really. And of course, uh, that all sounds amazing and, and all, but how do we know what visual, con uh, what visual content is and, um, and what will work for our goals and uh, how do we make sure that people see it and how do we come up with the right ideas, right? So um, yeah, as, as, as I'm showing here, I think that uh, when we talk about what visual content is, I mean, it's just more than, it is a combination of, of and it's very, in its core, it's a combination of images and text and, and graphics and images that you see and read and interact with in, in the consuming media, right? So, I mean, it can go from this webinar, photo slideshows or infographics, you know, eBooks and all that. And um, I read somewhere that uh, the average modern person uh, sees or is exposed to at least 5,000 ads per day, which is a astronomic number. But really, when, um, when we think about it, we're so desensitized. And that's why we're here to talk about it today. I think that um, we're in a day and age where we need to find different ways to put it together in such a way that it doesn't feel like marketing and it doesn't feel like uh, we're trying to uh, conduct people uh, with a purpose and needs to feel natural. So why do I like visual content and visual communications? Because it's effective. It really provides uh, three advantages that, that uh, I think actually, if done well, most visual, uh, most visual communication has with your audience. And that's the fact that it's appealing. So visual content really uses the sign to present the information in a format that is actually stimulating to, to, to the user or to, or, or to the person who, who's on the buying side. It's attractive, it's engaging, and it makes it easier to synthesize and as well as pick the interest immediately. And um, yeah, and in, in short, it's uh, really the visual content of what you create that grabs your attention most of the time. And, th and that reason is because your brain, the, the way that, that, that it processes um, visuals, it's a lot faster than, than that of text. So it's more efficient. Um, and this means that obviously your uh, potential buyer is, is uh, a lot more prone to be able to interpret uh, these visual cues and visual information almost, I would say instantly, with minimal efforts, uh, whereas you know when when you're reading a text, it's, it's a, a little harder. <laughs> um, but it's all it's not just easier to understand; it's it's also more engaging to to it, more enjoyable and more engaging. Um, and the last thing is that obviously it is easier to retain, right? So we're talking about a the visual processing system, um, which also works with long term memory memory. And uh, this really connects your images or what you're presenting in front of the user with information that is already stored um, in the brain. So this makes, uh, makes the visual content um, a lot more memorable than other mediums. And I'm not trying to bash um, you know, a blog post or, or a long email or anything like that. It's just uh, the way that our brain really works. Um, <clears throat> I think that uh, actually before I even move to, to, to this slide, I think that um, back in the day, back in the madman era uh, where brand publishing and, and, um, and um, big newspapers and, um, and ads were saved for, you know, ad people or traditional ads and sales collateral and all those uh, very traditional methods of um, 
of our, our approaches to, to marketing uh, now with this visual approach um, that is very, very um, attainable to, to, to most people, you're, you're able to create so many more touch points that, that truly let you tailor and deliver an interesting message at various stages of, of, of the journey, right? And this is what ultimately is supporting your marketing goals. As a matter of fact, um, before reaching this webinar, maybe I can actually do a poll here. Um, I, I'd be curious to how you found out about this webinar as uh, when we picked our audiences, we established that, um, that we would need around uh, five to seven touch points to get uh, get you here and uh, and get you to to listen to to sit down and listen to me. So um, so this is something that that always must be me be taken into into account. And, and all these uh, different touch points at the end of the day really do three things, it, and that is expand your reach, uh, spread the word, and really build an authentic relationship and your just the, I mean, obviously expanding your reach, um, it's, it's pretty obvious uh, you're creating a consistent um, presence throughout all the, all the different channels and the visuals really are the price of entry. And in terms of, of spreading the word and, and expanding your reach, um, of course, it's easier to, to publish uh, on social media outlets than, than it's ever been before. And of course, uh, a lot easier than, than to copy paste or, or write an article. And of course, in terms of building a, an authentic relationship, I think that consumers are, it's safe to say that consumers are more attracted to brands, not just for the services and, and the core products that, that, that they're uh, serving the user, but um, they, the user wants to be able to relate to them and to the company's personality and culture. And um, you can do so um, and reinforce it through Instagram or a blog or start creating different windows to your company and who you are. And um, you can only do so through, through all these channels. Um, moving into the actual journey. <laughs> Sorry for, for uh, blabbering blabber on for, for, for quite a while, but moving on to the, on, on to the actual journey, which is uh, quite long. I think it, it's, uh, it's important to understand that visual content really helps you support uh, your efforts and moving people along uh, the path to purchase and beyond that to, to advocacy. And um, when, when we talk about uh, attracting uh, users or attract or the attraction stage of, of, of the journey. I think it's relevant to the what, what you're creating or rather the visuals that you're creating should be relevant to a much wider audience and it should be made to catch the attention of the viewer. So 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 that they all play different roles. And what you'll be serving them is typically informational or it should have entertainment value and it shouldn't stray much further than that because at this point what you what we're trying to do is really stand out in a sea of sameness when once the user has once we have piqued their attention and the user is um actively looking and um what we're what we're trying to do with our visual communication is to build that brand credibility and trust. And how do we do it? We do it with product information, uh, with expert guides. Um, typically, this will be in, in, in the form of infographics, for example, or um, things that are related to, to the product, but are not um, aggressively targeting the user in a way that um, they feel that you're selling to them. Now, once the user is ready to buy, once we're in the conversion stage, um, the point is to really educate on the benefits of, of choosing you with clear calls to action. For example, case studies, product literature, uh, battle cards or kill sheets, right? And these are things that summarize your business in a very, in a very concise and, um, and easy to consume manner 
and here's where you, you will need it. Or, or for example, it could also be a webinar. It could be um, something that makes it super easy for the user to really uh, catch that leading edge that you have um, in a few, um, with, with a few pictures and, and, and text. Uh, next, moving on to ad ad advocacy, I think this is where people uh, neglect their media or their content the most. I think uh, here's where you should be providing value to the audience plus purchase to the lifetime to bring that word of mouth to get those referrals and create content to reach uh, so they can reach goals, right? So. What we what would be creating here would be a knowledge base. For example, this webinar uh, has been uh, will be added to to our knowledge base or to, to our repository of webinars where our users continue to go back to it and try to learn from it, creating content that is not uh, given to to anyone else, right? And throughout the the journey, you will continue repeating. And one one more thing about uh, advocacy content is that um, at the end of the day, this is I would consider it some of the easiest content to create, given that it's a mix of all the first three. So uh, when it comes to repurposing, this is uh, maybe uh, a quick win that I would definitely um, recommend looking into if you're not already doing so. Uh, so what's the secret sauce? What's, uh, <laughs> what's behind uh, a successful content strategy? I think that, that the secret sauce really are strategic considerations. One doesn't just um, create content and say, okay, I'm going to create a, uh, a pretty picture and I'm going to put it on Instagram or, or on Facebook and it'll become a, a, an overnight hit. Yes, it can happen. Um, but in in marketing, I think that, that, that what's important really is to reap the benefits of knowing where you're going, what's the intent and what's the intent of your audience and matching that. And it's not as, as hard as it sounds when it comes to visual content, really. So what, are, what am I talking about? Audi we start with audience and goals, right? So before we even start to create a creative brief or before we even start to create that content um, and, and putting images together or collating things, I think that we, we should know who we're really going after, what type of content will they, will they be consuming or are they currently consuming? How aware or knowledgeable are they? Are they, are they product aware? Are they solution aware? Where are they in, in, in their journey and or within the topic that, that you're presenting to them? Is this is an opportunity? Is, is this something that, that, that is already saturated? Um, secondly, what are your expectations? What unique value will they get from, from, from your content, right? Uh, so what do you want them to do? after seeing your content or what do you want them to know after seeing your content? What's the takeaway of creating it? I always say what doesn't get measured doesn't improve. And, um, and I think that this also applies to, to your content. I think that a lot of teams create, um, for example, Facebook ads or, or different Facebook posts and, and they complain that, 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 that it doesn't work. And the reason why it doesn't work is because firstly, um, oftentimes some of the considerations within, within these um, questions are incorrect. So the idea of, of uh, pu putting posts out there or putting ads out there is to validate or reject. And, and secondly, I think that it also boils down to creatives and distribution, of course. Um, creatives is, is uh, a very important part of the creative itself that, 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 that you're uh, distributing is a very important part of, um, of, uh, of your strategy. And the question that you should be asking is what, what creative will engage them to take the desired step, right? And that's why we A-B test as well. Um, secondly, is it our current visual addressing both our audience's needs and our goals at the same time? If yes, we should proceed. If not, then we should get back to the drawing board. And the other aspect and fourth aspect, aspect is distribution, right? So what channels will we use to best reach our audience? 
and um, how much, how, what are the potential benefits and drawbacks of using them? For example, earlier on, we also touched upon, um, um, I think that, that, that we mentioned, uh, no, we haven't mentioned it yet, but uh, we have different touch points that, 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 that we will continue to use. And, um, and they all have an opportunity cost. So it's important to, to really understand what, for example, what penetration rate they, they, they will, they will um, bring along. Um, and of course, uh, how original is your idea compared compared to to the rest? I mean, if if uh, we always should stress test our ideas and challenge them, um, and does it work with your brand? Um, I think that this last point is very understated. A lot of people um, continue, or at least I, I continue to see brands putting content out there, or LinkedIn, or or different uh, channels where. Uh, you see a great creative or a great um, a great value proposition, um, but you cannot tie to the brand. It's uh, off brand. There's no brand colors. There's not. There's nothing to to really tell uh, that um, that it belongs to them. And that's a, a missed opportunity because at the end of the day, if you've been listening for the past five five to ten minutes, uh, you'll know that um, this is what's. Uh, what people will remember later on or, or who they, they will come back uh, to later on. So uh, the platforms and benefits, right? So we're, here's where we start to touch upon matching goals, expectations, and budgets. So I think that, that it's uh, really important to consider all your, your options. Uh, we're in, day, in a day and age where we have a myriad of different uh, platforms and uh, our, although our time is spread thin, I think that we have the tools, uh, especially for XR users to create all these touch points in one go, or at least uh, a combination in one go while trying to understand how to mix and match uh, different creatives. So, I mean, obviously um, the no brainer is always your website, right? So that's a free fixed um, limitless placement for you to continue using social. Um, here's where it's not just uh, thought leadership and, and control and full control over what you're putting out. You can also use influencers. You can also use your community and, and user generated content to continue to expand your credibility and, um, and reach. Um, secondly, of course, uh, social ads, um, the problem most likely the easiest way to get target, targeted thought leadership or to get targeted um, or to get your product in front of the user because of the elevator exposure uh, in terms of publications, of course. And of course, there's email marketing, which many of you have come through. Um, so I, I think there's a lot of naysayers when it comes to, to that, but a good email with good visuals um, is definitely a lot of free real estate that a lot of people are continuing, continuing to neglect and, and to ignore. But uh, at the end of the day, it's uh, 40 to $1 uh, spent. So I would highly recommend it. Um, and then of course, yeah, publications, uh, right? So a lot of, uh, of our businesses that work with Sarah continue to use uh, publications or, or um, print ads or print um, and uh, the great thing about it is obviously the credibility uh, with publication audiences and expanded reach. And then of course, in, in paid po publications, it's uh, the, the, the idea that you can get highly targeted and really expand your exposure to that of, of the publication. And uh, you have that guaranteed placement. Um, I didn't, I thought I, would, I wouldn't be doing you a favor if, um, if I didn't show you a real life example, I think that uh, with every webinar that, that I do, I think that if I give you a theoretical example or if I give you what the best practices are, but don't really show you how I do it in real life, um, I, would, I would be doing you this favor. So let's start, let's, uh, let's put it together. And um, for our next webinar, we, we're, we're going to talk about 
co uh, collaborate, a uh, creative collaboration. I think that, that um, this is a problem that a lot of teams currently uh, struggle with. And uh, they, it's not just a marketing problem, but um, it is a problem that really affects, uh, for example, heads of marketing or heads of, of, of design. And um, the main job to be done really is to get th that content out there, to get content that, um, that really catches the attention. But the problem is that typically their designers are spread thin because they are uh, constantly going back and forth, creating stuff and, 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 um, and doing changes or um, sort of uh, small tasks rather than uh, the strategic ones. And they really struggle to, to, to get it on time. So we, what we want them to do is to watch our webinar, to come through and how we're gonna get it through LinkedIn posts because this is where they're hanging out. Uh, blog posts as well, because th we know that a big chunk of our uh, readership or our user base reads our blogs um, and other thought leadership channels, right? Um, we know that these people are quite problem aware, but are not currently searching for solutions. This is a problem that um, really affects most of teams. Uh, um, polls have shown that around 60% of the teams suffer from it and they spend a ton of time on that. Um, and of course, what we're, what we're trying to offer them is a simple framework to streamline, uh, streamline creative collaboration. And, and we have identified about uh, five, seven uh, different places where we want to, to find them. So of course, as, as I mentioned, we will create a blog post. So we will need a blog banner. We will need um, different um, uh, visuals for the blog. We'll need a Zoom banner with the specifications as, as listed there, an email graphic because we will want to um, invite people. We will get one people in our readership to come over. And I think that this is that this will be the easiest way to, to find them, the most targeted way at least. And of course, Facebook posts and LinkedIn posts because and ads because this is uh, where our people are hanging out. Uh, and lastly, um, I added YouTube vid artwork. Why? Because after a webinar, what we're going to do is follow up with those who came and those who didn't come. And we're going to let them know what they missed or what they uh, might want to uh, see again. So without further ado, maybe let's just get to it. I think that um, I'll just start with uh, a normal. Let's go through our templates. Maybe I'll pick something on um, Facebook or Instagram. Um, let's see what we have here. Um, actually, let's pick an event because that's easier. Great. Righty. So what do we have here? Let's uh pick uh let's start from scratch. How about that actually? I like that even better. Uh let's go with a uh, blank template. Let's go with Instagram. Open. All righty, so I think the first thing um, that I want to do is let them know um, that uh, they're coming for a creative collaboration. Actually, let's, let's first, first add a background that, uh, that looks like us. Perhaps this is nice. Um, 
Let's replace the background. from photo actually no you know what let's 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 make our life a little easier and start with an actual template. Sorry, I'm just feeling a little lazy when it comes to, to doing this. So let, let's just. <laughs> okay. Um, start with this. Alrighty, so so what do we have here? Let's uh, first first thing first. Uh, let's replace this. I do wanna. I do feel very inclined to using our Sarah colors and uh, our multicolor assets. <clears throat> I think this is locked. Yeah, so let's see this. Let's remove, let's remove this. I think this has been locked by our. You, uh, 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 uh. So I can't use it. So let's uh, start by saying how to create a collaboration. <clears throat> Simplify it. Simplify it. Let's remove this. Apologies, my internet is a little slow today, so this uh, makes things slightly harder. When say that it's on March eighteenth at five p.m. EST, and I want to get rid of this, but I want to put a picture of myself in here. Um. Let's replace this with me. All right, there I am looking handsome. What am I missing? Maybe sign up now. Smaller and Uh, all right, um, let's leave it there as I don't want to get too, uh, get, take too much of your time. I think that one thing that I will want to do is change the font to my own, to Sarah's font. I also want to make sure that it's branded, right? So that's, uh, that's the other thing. Um, because I want people to remember my brand. Perfect. Let's make sure that everything's aligned, actually. 
There we have it. And now maybe let's copy paste this and tell people who I am, right? So they know. And next thing that we're gonna do is try to reach them in different channels. So currently what we're looking at is a LinkedIn post. Let's first name it. Um, and we'll want to reach them, say, I wanna create this for email. So I'm gonna, I work with, um, I work with um, Intercom, which uh, does 620, 680 by 1,200. Okay, perfect. So we're gonna copy and resize it. So now we have one post there. And uh, the next thing that we're gonna do, and as a matter of fact, what we're gonna add to this one is perhaps a button to let people see that it's also clickable. And the other thing that I'm gonna do, while well, that loads, or while well, that, while well, my internet decides to do something, um, the next thing that, that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna post it to social, to all, all the other social channels. So we have Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. As you can see, they're all tailored. Um, what I'm gonna do next is uh, ensure that they are correctly done. So for example, I didn't lock them. I should have locked the aspect ratio. Um, that's a rookie mistake on my end. So what am I gonna do here? I, I'm gonna expand it and make it a little smaller. Um, so now all the posts are kind of ready to go and oh, except for this one. Let's make it a little larger. Uh, oh, wrong way. <laughs> all right. So, um, so once I'm done with this, I I'm ready to, to post it. So. I'm ready to share it. And um, what I will want to do, of course, is uh, uh, change uh, anything that, that has to do with, um, with the actual uh, text of, uh, of, of the posts. Um, back to our, our one for intercom, what I wanted to do here is to add a, um, let's make it larger, let's not let people forget about it. Oh, I was actually supposed to be small. Uh, let's not let people forget about us or about Sarah. Okay. And what we're going to do, um, since I'm in a rush, is I'm going to add a small button here so people can actually just uh, click on it and, uh, and they are aware that it's, uh, and they're aware that, um, that they can sign up right here uh, by just clicking on it. Um, let's just drag it along. All righty. Oh, what am I doing? Right. Okay, sign up. All righty, so that's it. So now I'm ready to, I'll either download them or in this case, I will just push them straight to social. Um, I haven't connected my profile because of this, this is a demo account, but this will uh, push it directly out there. Um, and that's it. Once, uh, once it's over, once I have actually gone back and, um, and done the presentation, what I will do is I will add a, the, the YouTube one to uh, our artwork and uh, I will finish it up that way. 
Um, I was wondering if anyone had any questions before we wrap up. I think that I have taken up quite a bunch of time uh, with my with my live demo. And um, before we go, I definitely want to answer any questions that you might have. And uh, yeah, now would be the time. One thing that I forgot to, to mention, well, I see if there's any questions. Um, thanks. Um, if there's any, one thing that I forgot to mention is that, uh, of course, um, this is a, um, this is something that that uh, if I'm fully happy with, I can replicate for later on. So what I'm going to do here is um, save it as a template. So if my team wants to replicate it ever after, uh, what they're going to do is just so I'm going to save it. Um, let's just uh, save as a template. Um, whenever my team sees this, they can just click on it and uh, a new uh, duplicate will be created for them. Um, it will not be saved as with the original one. So it will be saved to their own account. And uh, this uh, ensures that uh, people stay consistent with their visual content. Um, the other thing that I forgot to do earlier on where I broke the golden rule was I should have locked items in place. This is what prevents items from being distorted or changed, or as you saw, some things uh, moved around. So if you lock it, or if you lock the aspect ratio, this will stay in place. Uh, it was my rookie mistake as I am only a mere mortal, a marketer, not a designer. And uh, sometimes I forget to, to do these things when I'm in a rush. But uh, this is something that will save you a lot of time. It will um, allow you to just continue creating. And uh, as you create your designs and you create new designs from older designs, you'll, uh, you'll remove that error-prone process that uh, most marketers go through in the trial and error. So um, I would highly recommend uh, doing this anytime that you actually create any visual content, really. Uh, let's see if, if there's any any further qu any questions. Um, it didn't seem so a few minutes ago. So that's it. So it looks like there's no questions for now. I appreciate you coming today and sitting and learning a little bit about visual communication with me. Um, if you have any questions later on, please do feel free to email me at alfonsos at sarah.com. As always, we are in the chat and if you have any questions or if you want to create your next visual project and you haven't signed up for Xara, uh, you can always do it at xara.com. Uh, sign up is free, there's no credit card required and um, it's super easy to get started as I just showed you. So have, I'm wishing you a fantastic evening or a fantastic day wherever it is that you are and uh, hope to see you again. Bye-bye.